So if you're going to understand Newman projections, I highly suggest you build a model similar to this one right here. So rather than looking at a normal perspective here, so if you look here, this hydrogen right here is coming out at you. It's a wedge, and this one's coming out at you as well as a wedge. And these two back here are both corresponding to dashes. They're going away from you. And then the methyl group here and the methyl group here, both in the plane. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this molecule 90 degrees and give ourselves a little bit different perspective. And this is the perspective we're looking at when we look at a Newman projection. So in this case, this would correspond to what's called the anti-conformation. It's a special type of staggered conformation. And you can see why they call it staggered, because the three bonds coming off the front carbon that I can see are exactly in between the three bonds coming off the back carbon that I can see. So hence, that's a staggered conformation. Now, there's an infinite number of possible co combinations, because we can just start rotating this one degree, one degree, one degree, one degree, you know, at a time. And so there's an infinite number of combinations. And out of that infinite number of possible conformations, we only really draw six of them. And we go to the extremes. Uh, and that would be the high energy and low energy extremes. And the staggered conformations here are the lower energy extremes. So and we're going to start rotating this 60 degrees at a time until we get back to this anti-conformation. So as we rotate it 60 degrees apart, we get to our first eclipse conformation. You can see why they call it an eclipse conformation. The front carbon's three bonds are exactly in front of the back carbon's three bonds, hence eclipsing. So, and this is, ends up being higher energy, and its reason it ends up being higher energy is the atoms are as close as they could possibly be together. So, and the bigger the atoms, the more they'd be bumping into each other. We call it steric hindrance. But also, the electrons and the bonds are as close as they would ever be together. And electrons being negatively charged, that's a repulsion, and that's high energy as well. So, and again, the atoms being near each other call steric hindrance. So, the bonds and the electrons uh, repelling each other uh, is called torsional strain. So, steric hindrance or steric strain, and then torsional strain as well. And those are the two reasons why these eclipsing interactions are the highest energy, because we're going to have the greatest amount of steric and torsional strain. So if we rotate it another 60 degrees, we're going to be back to another, whoop. so I went over it a little bit there, but back to another staggered conformation. So in this case, uh, this staggered is not near as good as the anti-conformation we had just a second ago, and that's because this carbon and this carbon are now only 60 degrees apart. So in being only 60 degrees apart, we call that a gauche interaction, and so there's more steric hindrance associated with these gauche interactions uh, than we had in the anti-conformation. Uh, and in this case, the bigger these groups are in the gauche interactions, the higher energy they are. And so oftentimes we'll rank different Newman projections for a molecule based on how many gauche interactions it has, as well as uh, how large are the groups that are involved in these gauche interactions. Uh, but keep in mind, these Gauche interactions are only ever in a staggered conformation. We'd never talk about them in an eclipse conformation. If we rotate another 60 degrees clockwise here, we're back to another eclipse conformation. And this one's higher energy, not as stable as the last one we had as well, the last eclipsed. And in this case, because these two large methyl groups are now the ones eclipsing each other. The bigger the groups eclipsing each other, the higher energy as well. So not all eclipsed are equivalent and not all staggered are equivalent. Let's rotate it another 60 degrees. So, and now we're to another staggered conformation. And yet again, we have another gauche interaction between the methyl groups. So rotate it another 60 degrees. We're back to another eclipse conformation, not as bad as the last one, uh, equivalent energy to the first one we showed. And then finally, rotating it back another 60 degrees gets us back to our lowest energy, most stable conformation, the anti-conformation, uh, in this case, a special staggered conformation. So this is what I, uh, you know, kind of the understanding you need. It's helpful if you see it in a model, and hopefully this helps. Uh, but let's draw some pictures. So here you're being asked to draw the lowest energy confirmation of 2-chlorobutane as depicted below here. So real important here, it's down the C2-C3 axis. We define it like that. We're telling you which bond to look down. Uh, in this case, when we define C2 and C3, it's the numbering system you'd use if you were naming the compound. So in this case, with 2-chlorobutane, we'd number it 1, 2, 3, 4, not because we always number things left to right, but because the chlorine being the only substituent, we'd get the lower number if we number left to right, not right to left. If I had had this reversed, you'd actually want to number it the other way around. And that would affect which side of the molecule you're looking at, which is really important, as we'll see here in a minute. Uh, but in this case, being a lowest energy conformation, we should first of all realize that we want to draw a staggered conformation, not an eclipse conformation. So in here, looking down the C2-C3 axis, we're going to position our eyeball here to look right down the bond axis right there. So carbon 2 here is going to be our front carbon, depicted by a point, and carbon 3 would be the back carbon, depicted by the circle in our Newman projection here. Uh, so in this case, our point for the front carbon, uh, we can see the bond of the chlorine. We can see the bond to this methyl group right here. And then there's a hydrogen not drawn in that I'll draw in. 
that we'd also be able to see. But the bond between 2 and 3, that's the one we can't see because we're looking down that bond axis. Uh, carbon 3 is right behind carbon 2 in this case. Uh, and in this case, we've got an option. We can draw our bond in the plane straight up or straight down. So, and that's this guy here. So everything that's a wedge from this side of the molecule is going to appear on our right-hand side. And everything that's a dash is going to appear on our left-hand side. But if you're not a wedge or a dash, you're right down the middle. In this case, it's right down the middle, right below where we're looking. So it's going to be straight down. So, and then go off 120 degrees in both directions, we'd have two more, uh, our other locations. So this is your CH3. So your wedge coming out of the paper here, or out of the monitor, or however you want to look at this, uh, would be your chlorine. And then going away, hydrogen would be on your left, being behind your monitor, uh, looking at it from that side view. So then the back carbon, we can't see it. So we draw a circle to kind of represent that we can't see it. And in this case, he's got a couple of hydrogens that formerly weren't drawn in. Uh, we'll just add to the diagram, one a wedge and one a dash. And then he himself also has a methyl group here, carbon number four, as well. Uh, and again, the wedged hydrogen's on our right, the dashed hydrogen's on our left, but the methyl group, it's not on the right or the left since it's in the plane. And from that sideways perspective, it should be right above where we're looking. So we've got uh, two CH3s there. Uh, and then those hydrogens, one on the right, that's a wedge, and one on the left, that's a dash. So and here's one of the staggered conformations of our molecule. Now in this case, this is one of three staggered conformations we could possibly draw. So in a great place to start, and we wanted the lowest energy one. So it's one of those three staggers. And if we look here, we have a gauche interaction. So in this case, we happen to have a gauche interaction. So between the methyl group and the chlorine. So if we envision the other three staggered conformations, in fact, let's just draw one of them. I'm going to keep the front carbon fixed, and it's the back carbon I'm going to rotate relative to that front one. I could have done the exact opposite and kept the back carbon fixed, and rotated the front one. So and in our case, I'm going to rotate that back carbon 120 degrees clockwise. And so all three of those groups are going to trade places. So the methyl group is now going to be down your lower right. So hydrogen here, hydrogen here. And if we look now, we have another gauche interaction right here. And the question really becomes, which gauche interaction is preferred? So and it turns out chlorine takes up less volume overall than CH3 and has less of a steric problem uh, than your methyl groups. And so here, this gauche between the methyl and the chlorine is better than the gauche over here between both these methyl groups. And so this one so far is lower energy. And we don't actually technically have to write the last one. If you would just envision rotating around another 100 and 20 degrees, you'd find out that this methyl group that we're having a problem with would be in this position, and there'd still be this gauche interaction that would show up in the next one right, right, right like here. And so we're going to end up with one gauche interaction no matter what. Usually you want fewer gauche, and then if you have the same number, then you want gauche with smaller substituents. And again, chlorine being smaller than the methyl group, this one is the lowest energy staggered confirmation that we come up with, the overall lowest energy confirmation for the two chlorobutane depicted below.